Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Greg Furman, market analyst here at TraderPlanet.com and these are the market positions for June the 9th, 2010. Now our first position for tonight, we're going to be looking at the U.S.-Canadian currency pair in the foreign exchange market. Now what we're looking at here is getting into short positions. We have our predicted true strength indicator that's crossed over the, to the downside, which I've talked about earlier this week. Our predicted MACD is now starting to, to confirm this. It's starting to cross the trigger also. Everything looks good there. We can see a number of these candlesticks have penetrated the 18-day predicted moving average over the last several days. Now this one lone green candlestick here that I hope everybody can see okay, this represents the basically the nonsense after the non-farm payroll number. So we can see that once this is worn off, the market essentially has come back to right where it was prior to the release of that uh, the, the non-farm payroll number. So things are calming down now. We're going into Wednesday trade. So everything looks good for, as we can see that this, this move lower was happening prior to the non-farm payroll number and then it skyrocketed higher when the commodities and the equities weakened. But now that the equities and the commodities are starting to calm down, this looks good. Now what we can do here to confirm this trade, because our triple EMA crossover is still to the upside, so what we want to do is follow a regular routine of checking these crossovers. Our crossover on the short term is crossed to the upside, but we can see that it's turning down, starting to turn uh, negative. Our, our medium term crossover here, we're going to have a look at that one. We can see that it's crossed over to the downside and that took place actually just prior to that non-farm payroll release. Another good indicator. Now we can see that the, the uh, predicted moving average moved up and tried to cross the standard moving average, but it couldn't do it and it's starting to move lower. Now having a look at the long-term crossover from vantage point, we can pull this up and we can see that it's also crossed to the downside also. So our three main indicators prior to the triple EMA crossover, so our three main crossovers, our short, medium, and long term, are all in agreement that this is probably going lower. So with that said, we're going to go with that. Now, uh, again, I like the shorts on, Can on U.S. Canada for a number of reasons. If we look at where the U.S. dollar index right is right now in comparison to where it was several years ago at this level, the U.S. Canadian pair was actually trading in the 130 range. It, with the U.S. dollar index in the the almost above 89, I think we did get above 89 this week already once, the highest the US CAD has got is in and around the 106, 107 area. So this tells me that there there is substantial room for the US Canadian pair to move lower, not higher. So, and again, as I've talked about, I anticipate the US dollar index will begin to soften, start moving lower. We've had seven months of strength. So all of this basically translates into uh, strength in the Canadian dollar and the weakness in the US Canadian pair. So with that said, let's go in, have a look at the daily report and see what it, what's happening with the daily report for tomorrow. We want to use our predicted highs and our predicted lows to get in and to get out. Now we can see here that the neural index has turned negative. That's a good sign, albeit it's a very short term indicator. We are looking for that. So we have 105.45 as the high, 104.40 as the low. Now, point of interest here, our predicted short-term differences were 62 yesterday with the neural index up. We've now moved all the way from 62 down to 19. We've gone from uh, 11 to 2 and 21 to 33. Now, this longer term here, going from 21 to 33, further into the negative is showing me that in the longer, medium to longer term, the strength to the downside is beginning to increase. So this is an early warning sign that we should be looking at getting some short positions in there. Now, we, we all, we're also looking for the commodities and the equity markets to continue to cooperate here, and this should push the U.S.-Canadian pair back down towards that 103 mark where it was last week prior to, uh, again, prior to the non-farm payroll. So if we're looking at, at this from last week, we can see that we were sitting, the, the day before the non-farm payroll release, we were sitting at about, the lowest we got was I think 103.24, 103.25. So we would be looking for this to simply continue on with that now that the non-farm payroll nonsense is over with, we should see this continue and start the slide 
back down to that 103 range. So that's our first position for tomorrow. Now our second position, we're going to have a look at the gold contracts. Now, what I want to point out, I'm going to, I'm, do, I'm going to do a split screen after we do our analysis and we get into our, where we want to enter this trade. I'm going to do a little bit of a split screen between the gold and the U.S. dollar index because it's very, very interesting what we're going to see. Now, to start, our, to start this, we're looking at the predicted true strength indicator from vantage point has crossed over.